Hi, I'm Laura Brzee, executive speech coach, helping you achieve professional executive presence at work and wherever you need to make a great impression. This month's videos are on how the voice breaks down when under pressure. When you are speaking in a particular situation or with a particular person where you are fearful, anxious, uncertain, or doubtful about what to say or how to respond, inevitably something in your voice is going to change. And we're going to explore that by starting to talk about the most common symptoms that show up in vocal delivery during fearful, anxious speaking situations. So stick around for more information and subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Fear and anxiety and its effects on speech and voice delivery. The first two most common symptoms are a fast rate of speech and a low volume. This is backed by research to show that when somebody is nervous to speak, their rate of speech increases and their volume decreases. Now, the issue with this is that your listeners have a double trouble time trying to understand you. The brain cannot keep up whenever somebody is speaking really excessively fast. And also they have to work to listen to you because guess what? They can't hear you. So it is a very bad combination and it is definitely a situation where if you are attempting to come across as a confident, empowered speaker, you definitely need to moderate your rate of speech and speak at a volume that your listeners can understand. Shortness of breath is something that happens as a byproduct of the fight or flight response. You are in a chest breathing space whenever you are nervous to speak. So what that's going to do is it's going to create the perception that maybe your voice is a little bit too breathy. You may be speaking without enough breath support. So you actually might come across sounding as if you have a strained vocal quality, like you're working hard to speak because you don't have enough breath. All of the symptoms that we're covering here are directly related to the fight or flight stress response. So moving on to shaky voice, this is the one symptom where both the speaker and the listeners are impacted. Okay, I have heard listeners of speakers who are shaking whenever they're talking say to me, you know what, I feel empathy for this person. I just want to go up on stage and hold them. So shaky voice is a very interesting one that tends to drive a lot of nerves, not just for the speaker, but again, for the listener. The next one is filler words. The problem with filler words is that people use them way too excessively. Using um or ah every two or three words is going to be highly distracting for your listeners. I personally believe that using filler words sporadically, and I'm talking very, very sporadically, very seldom, it actually enables the speech pattern to have somewhat of a flow. Not unlike dancing. Dancing is a flow. Speech is a flow. And providing a few filler words to give yourself a speaking break, as well as your listeners a listening break, I think that's fine. But a lot of vocal coaches would disagree with me and they will say, cut filler words out entirely. I do not agree with that. That is not my philosophy. Last one, dry mouth. People often feel that maybe whenever they open up their mouth, they have to clear their throat to speak. Well, if you find that you're either throat clearing or just feeling the sensation of a dry mouth, water, water, water. You must drink water and you must actually have water available to you whenever you are speaking. Anything common like peppermints, hot tea, caffeine, Cokes, anything to just, you know, quote unquote, moisten your mouth. There are a lot of foods and beverages that people consume where they think that it's moistening their mouth, but in actuality is causing more of a detriment to their vocal hygiene.